You do not need to apply through this website in order to get a job at NASA. I was scrolling through my LinkedIn feed when I came across this. Do you notice anything missing? Here's a hint, there's a lot missing here. And at first glance, this seems like good advice. These are some really good basic tips, but they're a bit too basic. The majority of this advice here is to apply to NASA roles through usajobs.gov. Well, no Anyone who spent a few minutes looking into how to work at NASA has realized that NASA civil servant positions are gotten by applying through usajobs.gov. Any non-appointed, non-elected US government position is gotten this way. The remainder of his advice here seems to apply to students, particularly students who are in privileged positions who can get NASA internships or participate in NASA programs. What about everybody else? Are you shit out of luck? No, of course not. This advice here, while well-intentioned, is very limiting and misleading because there are many more ways to getting to work at NASA. Also, he leaves out one of the most important pieces of advice possible, which I'll get to later. First, I want to break down a misconception here. You do not need to apply through this website in order to get a job at NASA. There are many other routes to working at a NASA center or on a NASA mission. And the vast majority of those ways is through contractors and not just the contractors that you may think of. You can see here that there are over 17,000 civil servants working at NASA. This is throughout all of NASA's centers. However, there are multiples more working as contractors at these NASA centers. Here's a breakdown from Kennedy Space Center in Florida for example. There are a little over 2,000 civil servant positions at Kennedy Space Center, but there are over 12,000 people working at Kennedy Space Center. So around 10,000 people are contractors working at Kennedy Space Center. And these numbers, by the way, are from 2021. So I would not be surprised if they were even higher, even more skewed towards the contractor roles, simply because in 2021, there were still a lot of COVID protections, whereas now things have opened up a bit more. So those cafeteria workers, those badging people, those people who work on the infrastructure maintenance, those are all contractors. Those are not NASA civil servants. All the time I'm finding out that roles that I thought were NASA civil servants are actually being administered by contractors. Those contractors are not just prime contractors like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman. They're also a lot of smaller contractors and contractors that you've never heard of. So for example, I have had several NASA internships and some of them I was paid by the NASA Space Grant Consortium. However, one of them was actually paid by a small, tiny nonprofit research center center contractor that you've never heard of. I worked at Marshall Space Flight Center through a university contractor. I have worked remotely technically at NASA Langley. I've never actually stepped foot at Langley, but I have technically had a remote role at NASA Langley through a small contractor that you've never heard of. A significant number of NASA contractors are universities and research centers and nonprofits. So this is an important point for non-US citizens, by the way. Non-US citizens have a very difficult time working in the space sector in the United States. One of the most successful ways I've seen non-US citizens working in the space sector, working at NASA or on a NASA mission is through universities and research centers because they tend to be less restrictive. They tend to be more open to hiring non-US citizens. Whereas in industry, there's more ITAR regulations. If you don't know what ITAR is, I'm not gonna go into it right now, but you will run into that barrier. Now, what about people who just don't have that luxury of having had gone through NASA internships or NASA programs? The majority of my space career coaching clients have no formal background in space. They come from other industries. If you watch this video short that I posted a couple of weeks ago, you will see an example of my client who comes from outside the space sector. He comes from the energy industry and he just got a NASA civil servant role. Yes, applying through usajobs.com, but, and now here's that important part. Here's the key here. He also got that position by utilizing his network and using his contacts to really influence the decision in his direction. And that is something that that advice was completely lacking. Networking is so crucial no matter where you want to work. And especially if we want to work in a very competitive role where there are very few positions. NASA civil servant openings are fairly rare and they are very competitive. And so to get that leg up, you really do need to network. It really does make a difference. I know of positions that are posted publicly on usajobs.gov for about two days and then taken down because 
someone had networked their way into that role. That role was already picked before it was posted. So please do not discount the importance of networking in your job search. Do not be afraid to network with the people that you want to work with, whether they are at NASA or whether they're with a contractor or whether they're working on a specific mission. And this is not just to get them to know you. This is also for you to understand what that role is and what availability might be coming. So maybe you can better understand how you fulfill their needs within a specific office or team before you even apply. And that gives you true insight into the role that other people do not have when they're applying. And I'm here to help you. So go to lauraforsick.com and I'm happy to see how I can help you to work at NASA or to work in the space sector.